So today, uh, we, we're going to have, uh, Brother Shea's going to be me talk for a little bit, not long. I'm going to let uh, Larry Few and Tony and um, I guess Daryl talk a little bit about the details of the transition within the organization of police, fire, and parks. Uh, Mayor Edwards is going to come by and talk to you a little bit and uh, give you a couple words of encouragement. Um, there have been a lot of changes uh, in the last couple of weeks in the city, uh, as y'all might have heard. And so we'll talk about that before he gets here probably a little bit. <coughs> but in essence, what has happened since we last met was they gave us a piece of paper that says January 8th, parks are at Mar February 26th, it's fire. March 26th, it's police. We do not have a date for transportation. Who's in transportation in here? Raise your hands. You come every time, guys. That'll be great. You're looking for that $100? No. But transportation uh, still... Even talking to Mayor Edwards, that's going to be one of the last ones to transition over, which may be as late as November of next year, of 2018. So I think they're going to leave it kind of the same. So let's focus a lot of our attention on those three units I talked about, but we'll talk about everything else you'll talk Sharon Whitmore will be here a little bit later. Any questions you may have about retirement or anything that's working, we'll, we'll work on that as well. Um, so first off, those three, that was a big deal for the letters. Uh, the city is uh, fulfilling their obligation under the IGA as far as paying us uh, monthly. Now, we've, they've asked for some delay in payments because of the tax issue, which I won't get into here. But essentially, um, y'all are providing services to the city now. Y'all are essentially a consultant, almost, or a contractor to the city. I've kind of got to remind everybody that, yes, we work for the county, we work under the auspices of the Board of Commissioners, but you actually are a contract worker, unless you're general fund working out of the training center, right? So, but every, most people in here are not general fund. So the first office that's gonna transfer this time around is gonna to be Tony's office. Uh, in, in Parks and Rec, it's a little bit peculiar because the law is written such that for every acre of land that a park sits on, we pay them $100 per acre. And that includes the building. So let's take Crow Park, for example. Crow Park, the 10 acres, I don't know how big it is. So 10 acres, so how much money would thousand dollars So you get the whole park for a thousand. All right, so, but then you go to another place, you get the sand town over here, you got a facility with a gym, right? You got all the nice niceties of that. That's gonna go for thousand dollars as well, that's 10 acres. Okay, so 1,500 bucks. So some places they get a better deal than others, but essentially it's $100 an acre. That's all the code says. It doesn't say structure, doesn't have a basketball court, doesn't have a basketball. Those are all assets that will be moved over. We don't, we're not gonna give, uh, essentially, uh, it's, it becomes just incredibly easy, but to be honest, to transfer over as far as the actual transfer of a title of land. Now the complication becomes uh, shifting over to the uh, city system, whether it's IT or shirts and clothes and markings on the side of the, the bus, not bus, but the uh, truck, those are the things that get complicated. So Tony, come on up here, and um, I told these guys to give maybe a three to five minute kind of top view of what they're doing, just so you know. If, if you're not in police, you're not in fire, you pay attention anyway, because these, these things matter, because this, this is part of the successful transition. The goal, remember, is to hand the football off to the city of South Fulton, and for them to do what? Run with it, score touchdown. That's right. We don't want them. Matter of fact, if they fail, it looks like we're failing. So we want to make sure they can succeed. Plus, they've transferred three offices so far. They fulfilled their obligation. They, they hired every single person that wanted to go over. They didn't pick and choose. They hired every single person at the salary they were at. So we still have the same promise at hand now. So. Come January 8th, I suspect every single person on Tony's staff to be offered the same pay they're making today. All right, so Tony. Quite a few All right, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Let's see if I can keep this fairly brief. Yeah. Uh, we've had a couple of departments that have already gone over kind of testing the waters, you guys know, business license, code enforcement, and uh, planning. Uh, each department's probably a little bit unique. Uh, we're a little larger. We've got 1,050 acres of park space, 18 separate parks, and all those facilities Tom was talking about. So, and we've got a pretty sizable vehicle and heavy equipment fleet as well. Uh, so unlike some of the previous departments, we're kind of spread out across the city. 
Uh, so getting us transitioned over is going to take a little bit more effort uh, in some of those arenas that may have been previously. And the challenge for us is to transition effectively, get all the different things done, just like the rest of us, while maintaining our existing level of service and making sure we're taking care of citizens. So you kind of have to multitask and do both at the same time. We just had a fall festival while at the same time we're having IT discussions. We have basketball season starting, but we got vehicles that got to get changed over. And so it's a challenge of trying to manage all of that at the same time. Uh, I'm confident we'll get through it and we'll do fine. The most important thing for us are our people. Uh, we've already set up some conversations with Anquilla and Zena, the two HR people for the city. And in the next couple of weeks, they will actually start meeting with our staff individually, one at a time, to talk about their specific position, their salary, the benefits that are going to be offered. The goal, of course, is to make sure everybody gets transitioned over with as many questions answered as possible. I recognize that for the team I work with, this is a livelihood. It's how they take care of their families, feed their kids, and so people need to understand and be real clear about how that's going to work. So we've already set up those dates, and in the next week or two, those meetings will start so that each employee can sit down individually. And one step we took also was we asked all of our employees what questions they had about the transition. And we came up with uh, what we call FAQs, Frequently Asked Questions. And we sent all those over to the HR department and asked them if they would answer them in writing. And we're going to turn around, and, turn around and give that back to our staff so that some of their questions will be answered before we even get there. But then they'll have the opportunity to do that one-on-one. -on -one. So people first. So we've got that process underway. Uh, we do a lot of different things in parks. We're real operational heavy. Uh, we do a brisk business and facility rentals. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, we have folks doing everything for family unions and baby, baby showers and so on. Uh, Joan Troop, one of our administrative coordinators, is sitting right there. She spends about 70% of her time doing facility rentals. So we have to figure out how things that connect to citizens like that keep going. Uh, so those are some of the areas we're looking at. That kind of connects to the IT situation. So because we have so many facilities, there are a lot of computers, network connections, infrastructure, all that stuff. The city has a vendor working on that. We've set a meeting up with them. We've already got a timeline. But we have to manage all those details, make sure every computer works, all the software is in place, copy over the files that need to go over to the new computers. We're also trying to, at the same time, move over to the software the city is going to be using called Civic Plus. So that's what they're going to run almost most of their departments off of. And they have a version of that called Civic Rec. So Jamila Chris, who's one of our admin coordinators, is kind of heading that up and making sure that we're having all those conversations at the same time. We have a lot of contracts and agreements. That stuff has to go over. So we're talking to the city attorney about that, because we have a lot of different agreements. Uh, that IT transition I just kind of mentioned to you. Uh, like police and fire, we use a lot of vendors as well. Uh, so we've got a pretty long vendor list of folks that it takes to keep buildings and facilities and vehicles running. So we have to figure out how we take all of that stuff that we do currently with Fulton County and transition it all over. I'm not going to bore you with the details, but trust me when I tell you, it's a long list of vendors. Some of them we pay by P card. Some of them we do on purchase orders. Some of them we do on payment vouchers. And so we're having those types of conversations as well to make sure that when we get there, all of those things in place. Todd kind of mentioned the vehicles. We've got over 50 vehicles. That doesn't count all of our heavy equipment like backhoes and bobcats and all that kind of stuff. All of that has to be transitioned over. Uh, we have get emissions inspections on all our vehicles. Now, the other part was like, man, we've got some old vehicles. So uh, getting through that process is going to be interesting as well. And then you mentioned uh, restriping the vehicles. So they all, of course, say what for the county parks and rec right now. We've got to figure out how we're going to get that flipped over by January as well. Uh, and then there's a lot of programming. You know, we do everything from youth athletics to senior services, after school programs, summer camp. Uh, a lot of that stuff is done currently by registering on site. That will mostly go to an online registration process when we go to the city. So getting all that in place. And we have to talk to citizens to let them know what the changes are going to be. We do a lot of cash business right now. You come to do open gym at Welcome All, you pay a dollar, two dollars. That likely will move to more online payments and registering and memberships. So as we're going through this, we also have to be talking to our citizens and communities to tell them what's going to change in January. Because at the end of the day, this is about what we do for citizens and how we connect with them. So they don't need to see all this that's going on behind us. That's what we're responsible for doing, making sure that we get this in place so that if you're a citizen, our goal is for it to be a completely smooth transition, that you don't notice any break in services, you don't get any disruption to the things that your tax dollars pay for. And so we're trying to manage through this. I'm confident that we will. The city staff has been very helpful. Uh, and so we're continuing a dialogue with them and excited about the opportunities that lay in front of us. Uh, there's a new world coming, and so the uh, best thing to do is be optimistic, work hard, and we're confident that when all is said and done, everybody's going to come out on top. Thank you. I've uh, kind of 
taken uh, the top five transition uh, concepts, and that's what I want to kind of get across to the firefighters that are here. But rest assured, there's a whole lot more that's taking place uh, in, in, the, in the backgrounds. Uh, first thing that we have to do, uh, we have to uh, contact Georgia Firefighters Standard and Training because what we have to do, uh, get a compliance application going. One of the things that's kind of holding us back from that is that we gotta, we gotta call ourselves something in the city. It's gotta be the city of South Fulton or whatever. Uh, that's part of the application process. And right now, uh, the city is working on uh, branding and getting a name for the new city. So we have to, we, we have to do that. Uh, and once we do that, uh, it's gonna simplify a lot of the processes that we have to go through. So that's the first thing we have to do is uh, work with Georgia Firefighters Standard and Training um, to complete the uh, compliance application. Uh, and we're doing that. Um, then number two, we have a 30-day uh, window for the uh, pension. Uh, firefighters have a Georgia State pension, and what we, again, we have to go under a name or something uh, for the city of South Fulton, and so that the transition is made very smoothly uh, when we get ready to come over for our state pension. Now, we're working when we come over, and start filing the documents, we have like a 30-day window, and it, it, it's gonna easily be done. We've already made contact with them. Uh, it's gonna be a pretty uh, simple, easy process for us to do that. Um, then we do have to have a uh, medical director. Uh, like most of the firefighters know, in order for the uh, City of South Fulton Fire Rescue Department to carry and administer the pharmaceuticals, we have to have a medical director on board. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the city of South Fulton is, has the documentation and, and, of course, we provided it to them of all we need to do to get a medical director and bring them on board because that's how we have to operate uh, as we deliver emergency medical services to the public. Um, and then number four, uh, we have to uh, order new uniforms. Um, that's, uh, that's a big uh, plus for us. Uh, I did do a budget where I think it was $300,000 for our uniforms. Uh, as we transition over to the new city, uh, we're having meetings. I meet with the uh, finance director in a couple of days to just talk about how the purchasing process is going to be handled so that we can go ahead and get the uniforms and be in uh, you know, the new city uniforms again. We need that name if, in order to do that, or you'll be carrying the same patch on your shirts uh, and wear that you, you have right now. And that just doesn't look good. Doesn't look good for us as a new city employee. It certainly doesn't look good uh, to maintain that patch of, of the county. Um, then what we have to do is to contract. We have some contracts that are out there. Uh, Intergovernmental agreements with the city of Atlanta. We provide fire protection to the city of Atlanta, which is a, I consider a very robust contract. They pay us $809,000 uh, to deliver service. And we want to make sure that that contract keeps going. Uh, and it doesn't go to the bottom line. No, <laughs> go to the bottom line. <laughs> that's, my, that's my work with the finance people. OK, just a little jokey joke. Uh, <laughs> Ain't gonna get trouble. <laughs> and then we have to also work with UIC, the Urban Area Security Initiatives, because we have a lot of equipment from UIC, uh, oh, millions of dollars of it, uh, and our preliminary discussions with them, we're fine. We just have to get uh, resolutions that transfer out the responsibility for us to maintain those units in the city of South Fulton. Um, and for us, that's going to be pretty easy to do that. All we have to do is uh, get the sig proper signatures uh, from, uh, I imagine, the mayor uh, or the city manager to say that we, the city wants to maintain the UIC assets and we will continue to deliver the service. Those are the, just the five main topics that I wanted to hit, uh, but we're, we're up and running and ready to go. Uh, and that rest assured, there's a lot taking place behind the scenes. Thank you very much.
the fire chief and Tony have already touched on a lot of things <laughs> that I probably would have spoken about. Spoken about. <clears throat> but what I do want to bring up is the fact that on yesterday, the bulk of our officers were sworn in by the mayor. The mayor just walked in the door. Um, and what that will enable us to do is to uh, provide traffic enforcement inside the city limits of the city of South Fulton. So that was a big thing for us. Uh, in terms of what we've done, we have done thus far is we are now, or the city of South Fulton is now recognized as an entity uh, by the Police Officer Standard and Training Council post. Um, each officer in the state of Georgia is post certified. So that recognition was a big step. Um, we've also procured what they call an agency identifier or ORI number, uh, which allows us to do our warrants and things of that nature. Um, they've also established a municipal court. As a matter of fact, I met with the mayor and the judge today to hammer out some things in terms of going forward once the police department is transitioned, what would that look like in terms of court security and transportation. So we're working those things out right now. Um, and we're also dealing with the issue of the prisoner housing. More than likely, we're going, the city will likely uh, enter into an MOU with East Point and one of the other local jurisdictions to provide prisoner housing. Um, we have also are working on the vehicle design, uniform and badge design, as well as we're even in the process of working on the policies and procedures for the uh, new police department. So those are just some of the things. And again, I'll be brief, since Tony and the uh, fire chief <laughs> touched on so much. <laughs> All right, thanks. <laughs> Well, well, as we move forward, I wanted you to hear that. I know some of you don't care about the other departments, but listen, you should care. This is all part of the same team, right? And like I said, it takes the whole team to score a touchdown. So one of the team members for the new city is the mayor, right? Yeah. And Mayor Edwards is here. Come on up, Mayor. Let's just say a few words. But uh, as, as y'all know, uh, he was elected mayor first year, I guess May 1st, your first day, right? And uh, we've been working with he and his staff pretty closely, and uh, as they move forward, uh, this process with every city usually takes months and months, up to two years. In fact, you look at John's Creek and others, they, none of these things happen overnight. A lot of people have these expectations, and y'all know how much it takes to do all these. And you heard some of the high level things that are happening here as far as patches and uniforms and marks on it takes time to do those things so they're they're pacing themselves and they've got a, a, a good, good game plan for the new for the winter and then ultimately uh come november of next year it'll be theirs and they'll be running full tilt ahead so mayor you got any words for these folks thank you john good afternoon, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, i wanted to come by and, and say that and talk to you and answer any questions you may have of me. Todd mentioned teamwork there a few minutes ago, and the team is not just the city of South Fulton. The team is also Fulton County. And we have to work together to make sure that number one, we're equitable to each other. <coughs> and equitable doesn't always mean equal. But that we must be equitable to each other because we're, we are serving the same people. And the people who are going to be employed with us are the same people. So what am I saying, man? I don't have time to argue with you about the same people. All right? So let's just make that, let's make that clear. There's nothing uh, brought down. It's just a statement of fact. All right? The other thing is, I know that it's been a long road, and especially for me. In terms of being the mayor, I'm the mayor now, I'm the county manager, I'm the economic development person. But let me tell you, it's full of guys that trained me for 14 years to do that. Because if you can deal with full of 14 years, you can do anything. <laughs> I say that in jest. But it prepares you. And, and, and I say it, Dr. Todd knows I'll say this. Fulton County has been the best training for people, fire, police county, 
We have more people around other cities who come from Fulton County who are now in high positions like fire chiefs and county managers and police chiefs, and they all got their training right here in Fulton County. So I'm looking for employees, but I'm stealing. I'm just playing. <laughs> We got, I just wanted you to know, the, the, all the work that you've done with Fulton County all these years, your work was valuable and you have been trained by the best place you could have been trained with, and that's in Fulton County. So here comes the new city. Well, the word new always get people kind of messed up in the head. But I'm going to tell you this, we've been able to hire some of the best people. A lot of them from Fulton County, a lot of them from other counties and even some from the city of Atlanta to make sure that we're able to stand up, up this, this community or this city in the right way. So we knew where to go look. Some of them came looking for us, but we knew where to go look. And we're not ashamed. You know, people come, well, we don't want to, we, we're a new city. We don't want to look like Fort kind of hell, you know. <laughs> when, it come, when it comes to giving the service, yeah, you want to look like Fulton County because you want to get the best people you can get to perform the job, and that's been a task. All right? We don't have a money problem in the city of South Fulton. We have run this city since May 1st without one dime of property tax. We have a cash flow problem. That's a lot different. And the cash flow problem has been escalated with the tax situation. All of our cities and our school boards, if we borrow money, call a tax anticipation loan, all of a sudden. And then that tax anticipation loan helps us to run our government until taxes come in. And once the taxes come in, by law, we must pay that back December 31st, at the end of the year. The question becomes for all of us, how do we pay it if we have not collected our taxes? Atlanta the School Board got $100 million. I don't know what Atlanta School Board had, time, $200 million or something, or something, or Atlanta. But we don't have to collect that tax. So listen, we don't. It's not the fact that you hear in the paper because you got a lot of naysayers to say a lot of things. So I want to clear it up for you. We are not broke. We just have not gotten our money. Fulton County is not broke. They just not gotten their money that they deserve. The school board is not broke. Even though the, su the superintendent said that he will close schools if you had to. They're not broke, we're just trying to get our money. So I want to straighten that out. And when you're coming to be something new, everybody got something to say about you, ladies and gentlemen. And let me say, let me say this to you. At first sight, we may be a little chaotic to you in your eyes. At first sight, at first hearing, a lot of people are going to say a lot of things that even sit beside me on Tuesday that are just asinine. But we're better than that. I should have brought you uh, my handout, God, it says the first 100 days. Under all this what you call chaos, under all this what you call dysfunction, we have moved forward tremendously in the first 100 days to set this city up. You would not believe the accomplishments that we've had. But we over, we overshadowed by Facebook, uh, what is the other thing? Twitter, <laughs> whatever, Snapchat, whatever it is. <laughs> we get overpowered by that. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't have time to defend that. You can believe what you want to believe. I simply tell you. If you want to know the truth, come to the source. Police, Deputy Chief can tell you. Where Deputy? He can tell you. I went and talked to the police officer. I let my personal phone number on that, on that blackboard, did I not? That's my personal phone number. You call me anytime. Don't listen to this crap. 
get it from the source, and I'm not going to lie to you. Because if I was flying this plane, the only way you know you have a problem is if I came by your seat and I had a parachute on. <laughs> now you may have a problem. <laughs> but I'm not wearing any parachutes today. So I'll just say this, and I don't want to take up all you mean, I'll entertain questions. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. You know, we don't have a city manager. But you got a bill. You don't have economic development, the person, but you got beer. <laughs> and I'm not going to see for the 14 years I was with y'all in Fulton County, you all know how I felt about employees. I never let an employee down. And I'm not going to let an employee down today. And I said, see, someone told me that they said, this is a black city. I don't care about that. I really don't. What I'm caring about is we're going to be a city that we become one of the most diverse cities that we can be. I had a meeting with the, with the uh, Council General of Japan. And I went over, he invited me to the council. That's the only way, that's the closest to Japan I'm going to get. Because <laughs> when I walked on that ground, I was in Japan now. <laughs> so, and I sat down and he had his economic development person from Japan. He had his logistic people from Japan. I had a nice dinner. If I, I ate everything I could recognize. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the deal. At the end of the day, I said to him, I love to have your business. I love to have your money. But more than that, I said to him, and it blew him away, I love to have your culture. I don't want your business, I want your people. I want to see Japanese communities, I want to see Chinese communities, African American communities, I want to see Jewish communities, I want to see everybody. Because when we do that, we raise the bar. Not that one person is better than the other, but the exchange of ideas automatically raises the bar for all of us. We're in the process of naming our city. And everybody want to be funny. You know, they're going to submit stuff like Obama did. <laughs> <laughs> we would get not 45 wouldn't give us one federal dollar <laughs> if we would name Obama did. <laughs> but we're going through that process, and we're, we're, we are at the end of the day, at the end of, the, at the end of this next December, we'll have a name for the city. And it's important for us to have that name. But guess what? The name got to be something that people can pronounce. It got to be something that you can pronounce. It's got to be something that says something about the community and the neighborhood what it is in. And you know what? It's got to be something that you're going to be proud to wear on your shirt. That last one is the most important. That you be proud. I mean, I go to meetings. I go to, I go to man meetings. They, I walk in the door with other men. They say, oh, Lord, Bill, are you still here? Oh, Lord Bill, what they doing to you? Oh, Lord Bill, I couldn't do it. I know you can do it because you're not me. All right? They ain't doing nothing to me. I'm, my eyes is on the prize, and I want y'all to be on the prize with me. We're going to make some significant changes. You ain't seen nothing yet, but this just growing pains. I want to remind you, and make sure I got the right city type. I, mean, I think it was Milton or Johns Creek when they first started. It got so bad they had to send a therapist out there. <laughs> that was a true story now. That was a true story. John's, what's the one, what's the one of them? John's Creek. It was so bad, they had to send a psychiatrist over the city. Now, I'm not saying we don't need one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying we ain't got one yet. <laughs> but I am putting out a request. <laughs> So once again, thank you all. Listen, listen, let me tell you something. Y'all have known me for over 14 years as I worked in the county commission. I ain't changed. I ain't changed. I still remember my mother telling me a long time ago, if you see a man in a ditch, don't step over him because he's somebody's child. And that has remained with me all of my life. I'm not going to step over you. 
when you feel beat down, when you don't know what you want to do, you scared to come to the city, you don't know how long we're going to last, I'm not going to step over you. Because you're, you're going to be the backbone of what we need to get us to where we are. Do I like a lot of things going on in transition? No. Do I think we can work out our issues, whatever issue we had? I think we can. But that's what happens when you got two governments and whatever going back and forth over some things. But we're going to work it out. I'm not here to blast the county. I'm here to thank the county for what they've already done. And they have significantly done some things to help us out. Because you can always put things on the paper, and, and Todd can tell you, you can put it on the paper. But when it comes down to implementing and the little things that's not on the paper start popping up, and you have to go to Todd and talk to him and say, we, that we just wasn't in there, but how can we handle this? And we get it done. The things that you don't, you can't see. So ladies and gentlemen, you got to be soft or strong. You see the t-shirt, that was my sister. I came over there one day, I was looking at the paper again. And I said, you got to be soft for the storm. No matter what you tell me, you can call me everything you want to. You can say I'm a black city, they ain't going to make it, but I'm strong. You can tell me I don't want to come to Old the South Fulton because I don't know what they're doing because they don't act right in the board meetings. But I'm going to tell you we're soft for the strong. And I can prove to you today, if you got a question for me or if you got something that, that's on your mind, if you just scared. <laughs> You're only scared because of what people are saying. You're not scared based on the fact. Oh, I'm going to lose my job when I come over? Well, why would I do that? Who the hell is going to work? I mean, does that make sense to you? If you're on the street doing what you're doing, I still need you. If you're over there with balance, well, I may need you. <laughs> Mess it with you. <laughs> But I need you. I can't, you are, I mean, this, I can't do nothing without you. Okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, hang with me. We're going to be soft, with the strong. We'll get it done. Thank you, Todd, for allowing me to say that. Right, thank you, Mayor. You don't go too far, then. All right. I won't go far. All right. Let's go into the Q&A time. How about that? So, she's going to write the questions on the board. What questions do you have? All right. I retire from the Fulton County Department. Well, it would have to be the police department. If I retire from the Fulton County Police Department and there's no more Fulton County Police Department, what happens to my ability as a retiree to work at your jobs? Okay. That's a good question. All right. Corporation went over to the city. And my question is if the new city is paying. For those, the bust out checks, if you were to transition over to the new city, why could you take that money, that money meaning uh, vacation, sick, and whatnot, and accrue it over to the new city? Bust out checks. We have no bust out checks. Just to touch on the one will there be a Fulton County Police for Fulton Industrial? Is there any truth to the sheriff's department taking over calls for service on the board? Okay. So put this uh, FID service. We'll come back to that one. All right, good. Some of you transportation guys, some work guys. Good questions, Mike? Not, not yet. Not yet? <laughs> You're a ways off, it's a good problem. Yep. May I keep telling the transportation folks, they may be way off. We don't know when that transition will happen, but it'll be before November, I guess, or by November of 18, technically. Right? If I had this foundation in place, it would be tomorrow. <laughs> That's what matters. Yeah. As long as I get the, the foundation in place, it will come early. Well, we haven't got a date yet on the right, so we kind of leave it there. Are we thinking so? All right. Who else? All right, let's go to the retirement question first. Uh, so, Keen, you're up here. Why don't you come up here and answer this question. Can you retire and then go to the city of South Fulton? You know, of course, on the same page, that'll be a question. Okay. Yeah, but... Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Yeah. Yes, I mean, yes, you can retire from Fulton County. And then, you know, what we've been doing is, you know, for everybody that 
has transferred to the city so far. They've been transferring at their current pay. So I won't see any problem with that. I don't think anything has changed as far as that is concerned. So you can retire from the county and then go to the new city with your current pay. I told everybody. I told everybody this. To the three offices that transferred now, they all transferred at the same pay. That's what the city told us, and repeatedly said it. So they, I mean, I have no indication that that wouldn't be the case. But that's if you're a current employee, not retired. So the, yeah, but how we're handling that though? You can okay. You can leave employment through retirement, like official retirement, or you can leave employment by just the end of your last right. day. So either one. It doesn't matter. But, it does not matter. No, 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 no. If, if, if you retire today, if you retire today and then you want to work for the city, then I will assume that you're not going to apply. And it's because you no longer have to work for the city. You no longer have to work for the county for us to transfer you to the city. Let's back up a second. Let's, let's make this clear. So I don't want anybody confused about this. If you are working to the last day, so February 26th, is, is that a Monday or? Okay, so February 25th, because they all work seven days a week, right? All right, if you're, and you work out the retirement up to the last work days, the agreement I had with Ruth, and I'm, I'm assuming the mayor, same thing, it'll be like you're one of the employees are taking over. At least that's my thing. Now, if you retire today, and you're out of work for three months, you have to hire on with the city, because you're retired, you're not one of the employees that's transferring over, because you're not there at the end of the time. To make it simple, if you do what he says as a person, let go out to the end, you, you don't lose anything. All right? If you're new coming in, then you're subject to our pay, pay, pay plan. Pay All right? Understand? Now, if you, if you leave, retire, and come back, you could be subject to that pay plan. So the only way you stay where you are is that you wait, you stay with us to the end of the day, and then transfer over. Time your retirement in that month. Okay, let's go back to the questions on the board. Okay, we'll, 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 go, we'll open it back up at the end. But we're going to get. We're going to do the, answer the questions that have already been asked first. Before, or two weeks before, because yeah, so, when we retire to the county on the 25th, then are we going to already automatically have the paperwork filled out to go to the. Well, that'll be up to. That, how is that going to work? I know the ones that transpired from my department. They received it from. I mean, those are transferred from the business license office. Mm -hmm. They received the form, I believe, the week before they actually right. transitioned to the city. Right. So I would imagine, you know, the same thing will. No, they're, they're no. Okay. It's, it's actually, but they're off. Y'all were trying, in your timeline, y'all got that worked out on police and Tony to do that much sooner. That, that's, that was the goal. And it wasn't to wait a week before, it was to do it actually much sooner. Yes. All right. What was the next question there? A police department for Fulton Industrial Boulevard. So, so the Fulton Industrial District. I always, I don't call it Fulton Industrial Boulevard because Fulton Industrial Boulevard goes further than the Fulton Industrial District. The district is a boundary that was set in 1979 in a lawsuit between the City of Atlanta school system and Fulton County. Um, it was a, they were bickering about where people go to school, etc. In that district, there are. 20 to 25,000 workers every day, but at night, somewhere between 400 and 500 residents. Mm -hmm. Best we can tell. It's basically one apartment complex and half dozen homes. So not many voters in that district, but it's still set aside. Now, last year there was a bill that was gonna go forward and allow a vote for next Tuesday, for coming up, to vote about it. But that bill got vetoed. So there's nothing happening this election cycle next Tuesday about FID. Probably, in hindsight, a good thing that that happened because now it allows uh, the city of South Fulton and I guess city of Atlanta and potentially others to work out potentially what happens to that area. We don't know what's gonna happen. Right now, it is unincorporated Fulton as of today. But sometime during the session, it may be different, we don't know. Okay, they may they have to go back out for a vote. Those are all things that have to be determined. In, in, really, it's kind of a legal matter. And so, so right now, uh, we've got to decide how we provide services for that area at some point, right? So as we move forward, you know, obviously, let's take uh, fire. Fire is February 26th. 
So what happens really after February 26th? So right now, how it works is our fire department's providing service, Fulton County's is for unincorporated Fulton and for the city. We only bill, we bill the city for the amount, we subtract out the FID portion for the bill. So that's part of our reconciliation we do with the city. So what happens after that point? So for fire, uh, the way fire is structured, we got fire station at Plummer Road, which is just really right outside the border. We've got another fire station, obviously, right in the middle of Fort Industrial District, and we got one in the airport, which, from a standpoint of economic development and other reasons, we probably always need one at the airport, even though it probably doesn't get us really kind of a small unit. So fire, it makes a lot of sense for us, under every circumstance, to contract that back out to the city of South Fulton to provide this fire service, All right? Parks. There are no parks in Fulton Industrial District. None that I know about, right, Tony? Yes, sir. That's correct. So no parks, and that's easy. So the other area is, is police, and that's the question at hand. So we have been looking at different options. Uh, the city actually gave us a proposal uh, last week. Officially got an email uh, from the city for the city to provide those services, which would be ultimately <laughs> you guys, right? Uh, we've also got a proposal from the sheriff's office. You asked that. And also we're doing proposals, what it would take to stand up our own in other words, keep our core group of folks that uh, provide service. No decision has been made. We're weighing all those options. Um, it's certainly, I know the city's preference that we somehow work with them. And I'm not going if you want to say something, you can. I will. <laughs> but in general, we are going to be open to whatever our board gives us direction on. So we're going to present those to the board and work into those options. Um, so that's where we're at right now. So no decisions have been made. Do you know when a decision would be made? Well, we, we have to make a decision for sure on police sometime before March the 26th, so right? All the way up to then, you have to Technically, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's my sign. A little bit different. If I've been protecting your house all your life and have been doing a good job, why are you taking that away? That question to me has never been answered yet. I could see if I had a thousand murders and I wasn't taking care of them, or I had a whole bunch of stuff burning down and I wasn't taking care of, then at least I have something to argue with you about. Right now, I don't see nothing to argue with you about except that you just greedy. We have done this thing all the time and we've never had a problem. Even the board of the CID said they want to be in the city. Now let me tell you one other thing, because y'all got to know this. Every one of y'all who's working for Fulton County, you ain't, you aren't working, not working for us for free. We paying. We paying. We pay for the county to run the, to run the police department. We pay for the county to run the sheriff, I mean the, uh, not the sheriff, my God, the, the uh, fire department. And if you don't get, if you do not get the fire over here, the OSI rating is gonna be so high until everybody over is gonna go into revolt. I'm gonna tell you right now, because OSI rating based on fire protection. So I talked to Todd, and we had talked, man, Todd and Dick talk. Here's my resolution. Leave it alone. And whatever money it generates over there, just give it to us. Seven miles? I'm fighting you. I'm fighting Atlanta. Fighting everybody for seven miles? When we've done it for 10, 12, 14 years, what is the what is the inference? What is the rationale? Okay, here it is. Because they're they're in uh, they're in uh, unincorporated. They got something called them, a memorandum of understanding. Did we deal with fire chief? Do we have one if we got an answer? Yes. So why can't we have one with the city of South Make you want to go, hmm, doesn't make much sense, does it? So get a memorandum of understanding between the two of us, leave the place alone, 
Nobody don't really care as long as they get the service, same service they provided for the last 10 years and give me the tax money. Did you also need to know that, and I'm saying to you that, when we did the feasibility study for this city, it did not include Fulton Industrial Boulevard. And the feasibility study came back and said that this new city would be feasible even if you didn't have Fulton Industrial Boulevard. So you really ain't hurting me. I, what happens is you hurt the, 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 the delivery the services delivered for them 500 people you talked about. That's right. And for those businesses who are going to suffer through ISO increased ratings and things of that nature. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a slam dunk. Just leave it alone and give us the tax money. Uh, okay. Well, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to say something about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think part of the problem, part of the problem is, I'm not saying it's the old issue, but part of the problem is the resources. You know, what you're asking, because, you know, we've seen your proposal, you know, how much you want to charge the county for providing those services. We don't have that. I don't, I don't know what you mean. Well, In other words, if you have to provide police services yes. for FID, yes. what you're proposing to charge the county is more than, you know, what we can raise from the area in taxes. Unless, you know, we charge them after the letter. I understand they gave you $18 billion. No. The other day on, that was their figure. It, I ain't had nothing wrong. Eighteen million dollars. The, the, the eighteen million dollar tax figure was put out there the other day. Right. That's okay. I don't know what you got. That's let's, okay. Let's, okay. Let's, okay. Let's, All right, let's get off the topic. But that, no, that eighteen million, 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 million includes the school taxes too, guys. Oh, right. let's, let's, okay. That's like well, that's okay. Tax. But eighteen wow. million. We don't. But Todd, we don't. These people have been confused about that well, for days. I know. And all I'm saying is, is that it's very simple to do. Leave it alone, let it come into the city and be done with it. You plan on taking 20 of my offices, 20 of my offices, when I'm trying to grow offices, it does not make sense. You're talking about taking the majority of my, of my equipment that we have gotten from you, why is it great? Even you did not even put the, put the helicopter on the asset list. That's all I'm saying about it. All right. let's, be, let's be fair and equitable. Okay, let's go on the next topic. All right, so if I retire from Fulton County Police Department, what happens to the ability to work extra jobs? So I consulted with uh, Daryl over here trying to get an answer, maybe Daryl can help me, but I think you just have to work extra jobs, you have to be affiliated with any law enforcement. Is that right? Yes, I think the thing is, if the police department doesn't exist anymore, would that prevent him? I guess. I, I don't know that I, Dale, you just, you some. Can I uh, rephrase the question? Okay, rephrase. Uh, so I think maybe this would be a better I don't think you asked the question. Did no, you? I didn't, but uh, <laughs> I might can Under the same roof. Okay. I might can rephrase the Yeah, use the microphone. But the microphone, guys, why do we have to use the mic? Which would be recording. Because we're recording. Uh, a better question might be, will the new city offer the retired Fulton County police officers the opportunity to join as reserve officers with the new city police department. I don't have the answer for that, but I'll get it for you. Good question. All right. All right, so let's talk about this question about the bust out checks. You mentioned Parks and Rec. They haven't got bust out checks yet. Some probably wish they would, but they don't have them yet. But let's repeat the question and maybe Akeem can answer, okay? There, there was some yeah, that was it was brought up that there were some bust out checks that were issued to the new city instead of to the individual, I'm sorry, it's code enforcement. Uh, and it was issued to the city instead of to the officers and then the city in turn had to give it to the officers and then the understanding was that the city was being billed by the county for this transition and saying that it was actually, the city was actually paying uh, for those funds. So if that's the case then, if we transition to the new city, can we not take those funds and move it over to the new city and just have a balance? Yeah. Okay, yes, no, those, those code enforcement officers accrue the hours while working for the county. They accrue those hours and we pay them out for right. those hours. So the county pay them out. To the employer. You know, yes, the county, yeah, the county pay the employees for those hours. So we didn't pay anything to the city for the city to pay these employees. No, those employees were paid up when they left the county. Makes sense, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, what we did was, you no, know, we looked at those hours, you know, because those hours were generated while they were working for
the unincorporated area. Right. So um, we didn't charge the city per se, but you know, we charge, you know, we're levying some taxes to get that money back so that you know, we can use that to pay, the tax, so that the general fund, the county general fund will not be responsible for that. You know, that was, those were hours that you know, were accrued while they were working for the unincorporated area. There were also some hours for some of those employees that maybe work in the old SSD, you know, when uh, we used to have unincorporated areas in the north, you know, the Jones Creek and uh, Milton. Yeah, there are some employees that work there too. And those employees, some of them are still working for the county. So we set aside some funds from that time to pay for those hours. So we're paying those now also as employees transition out of the county, you know, using those funds. So that's what we're doing. And you can burden the county, I mean, at the city with those hours, because if you go to the new city with all of those hours, you can have 10 people, you know, asking to go on vacation the same day that they're starting to work for the city. I'm pretty sure the city will like that. Or you can have people even call it the city. And those are hours that, you know, you really can transfer from the county to the city. You're right. I see, this, I see the mayor, you know, nodding his head. One guy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, Mayor, we thank you for coming today. I really appreciate it. And uh, he's, he's very opinionated about how we do police and FID. And, and I, I'm here to tell you we haven't made a decision. Okay? I work for the Board of Commissioners. I don't work for the mayor, right? Right. That's right. So, I don't know. Are you part of the IGA? I am not. <laughs> no. I am not. But uh, anyway, uh, he's right. There's, there's, there's both sides of the story, but you know, he made his case tonight or whatever time it is, it's day, daytime still, right? But um, we'll, we'll know, and when we know from our board, given direction, you'll know. We'll send something out. Yes, sir. You have to get a microphone. Mr. Mayor, we'll, we weigh out and go through the transition into the city, whatever it may be named. Will there be any we won't be able to accrue any leave, but will there be any leave given to the firefighters, police, parks and rec to start with in case, the, you know, three days after you come across, you get the flu? Good question. I mean, yes. Let me, one thing about, good if I've been the mayor of a new city, you don't have the answers to all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> and I will get that answer for you also, but listen, take this to heart. Whatever we do, we want to be fair with you, all right? That's why I'm glad that I, I heard two things tonight that I need to go back and research. Tina said something I didn't know, and now you're saying something that raises question for me. But understand, whatever solution that comes out, we want to make sure that you don't lose anything. So at, not, at this time, that's the way I can answer that question, all right? I'm having a call, you want to get it all. Oh. All right. <laughs> all right. One more question on our bus stop checks. Is our tax pay and our longevity pay figured in on our bus stop checks for our salary? And some of us here uh, get paid 6% for paramedic pay. Is that gonna be figured in on our lead uh, as far as our bus stop check or not? I mean, we use your, we use your current hourly rate to determine how much to pay you. So I have to go back and look and see, you know, what is your current hourly rate, you know, depending on, I think, you know, it's all of those extra pay that you're talking about, I doubt they're gonna be included, you know, but just let me look into it and then if you wanna call me, if you call me back or give me your information, I can call you back and give you, you know, uh, a better answer on that. <coughs> Would there be a break in the pay period when we transition? <laughs> Are we gonna miss a paycheck? In other words, <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, no, no, you should, you should, you should. Well, that don't know what. Nobody complained about that before. I mean, yeah. I don't know what the pay schedule is. For the exactly. City. You shouldn't be, you know, now, as far as the pay schedule with the city, though, yeah. you know, it might be that, you know, maybe you walk out uh, some out yeah, before you get paid or something. But, but you will be paid. You know, there won't be a break in service. Yeah. 
there will not be no, a break. Yeah. You know, uh, I've not heard any complaints from the people who have been So what, what, what I want to do is to look at the schedule as to when you're going to be transitioning out of uh, the county and then look at uh, the city pay schedule. But nobody want to hire you if you don't make a break in your pay. Even if you have a, yeah. even if you have a desire to come, we have to look at well, when's the next paycheck, right. pay date, so that we will do that. Right, right, right. Thank you. Uh, we're a pay for your time, so we're right. Uh, Ken and Sharon, uh, do y'all have anything you want to say? So Ken Herman, our personnel, y'all know Sharon? No? Almost? <laughs> do you have another meeting? We meet. Uh, Pretty much every 30 to 40 days. So uh, what we'll do is, is the first of November, uh, we'll probably schedule something, what do you think, mid-December? I want to make sure that our, our personnel, human resources people are here. Yeah, they, and, and typically Ruth does bring, uh, Zena's been here, some of them have come to our meetings before. So usually Ruth comes and answers questions. Ruth can have a one job, I got back. <laughs> let, let, me, let me just announce something, you know, what we're planning to do out of the benefit of this. Um, for those parks and recreation department employees that are going to be transitioning in January, we are planning to schedule a benefit session with them in December. <clears throat> and then for the firefighters, we'll be living in uh, January. February. No, February. Yeah, we are going to schedule benefit session for them also in January. Where's it going to be here? Well, we haven't, we don't, we haven't determined that yet, okay. you know, but, you know, it will be announced through your department uh, heads. And then, you know, for the police, we'll also do something for them in February. So we're trying to do something one month before your transition date. Okay. okay. So when you see that, if, you don't, if you're not in that department, please don't come to that meeting because, you know, we are going to schedule something for your department. Okay. So we can focus our attention on those employees that will be affected. Okay. okay. All right. Any other closing questions? All right. I have one more for our employees who couldn't be here. Is it true if you um, is it true if you stay through the RIF if you're in the old pension plan and you don't meet the requirements for retirement, but you stay through the RIF that you'll be allowed to take that money from your old pension plan with you? You mean like a refund? Like or like you qualify for a pension? I mean, what do you mean by take the money with you? I guess, will they lose their entire pension if they're in the old pension plan if they don't meet the eligible requirements to retire? Freeze it, right? No, it, it, it's. Um, sure. Grab that mic from her. Oh, okay. Well, give, give Hakeem the mic. Let him answer. He looks like he's. I mean, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to understand what you're saying. You know, you mean like. Uh, the money you put in the pension. So you put the money into the, the DB, so the DB pension plan. Into the DB pension, yes. you know, yes. the defined benefit yes. pension plan. Yes. But no, no, the old pension. Yeah, the old pension plan. But you're not. But you're not you're eligible, not eligible for, to retire. Meaning because of age. Yes. yes. Because of age. Oh, you can or live, years of service. You can. You can. Or age. Right. Yes. Age, you know, <laughs> you can leave the money in the plan, and you know, once you reach you know age 55, then you know you can you know start drawing on your benefits. With an, with ancillary benefits. With ancillary benefits, right. yeah. How much time do you get out? Okay, you know what the requir the requirements are. You know, you can be right. sixty. The, the old seventy nine and uh, seventy nine years of service plus age equals seventy nine. You can right? Do, you can, yes. So you don't make that requirement. What happens with that pension plan? You are able to defer you, your retirement benefit until 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 you reach age fifty five. And at age 55, then you can draw both your retirement benefit and, and become eligible for ancillary benefits, yeah. health, vision, life, dental. Which, which is better for you rather than you know, taking the money out? Because if you take the money out, you're only going to get the money that you put in. You only get what you put in. You don't get it. You know. Is there a stipulation for public safety? Is 50 not 55? No, it's I think it's 55. Okay. Yes. Yes. I've heard that. Oh, yeah, you might be right. 50, there's a. There's a <laughs> Public safety. Huh? What was the question? Public safety. I thought it was something. It's only 4-1. It's 4-1. Yeah. Okay. So you are going to take it.
Because you no, know, what's going to happen is you know, they do some calculation for you as to how much of the money that you have in there you'll be able to get out of it, and it becomes your money. But but if you're in the DB plan and you decide to take the money out, you're only going to be able to take out you know what you put in there. No, no, you so which means you're going to lose. You know. I'm saying if you're eligible to retire, you Take that. It's your money. That's your money. You can take your. Talking about the money yeah. that you have in my school, yeah. Yes. It's yeah. your money. So, so you start dispersing it. Yes. All it's right. your money. But right. your best bet also on that is no, don't take everything out at once because of taxes. If you do, oh, yeah. they're going to tax, they tax all of that all money. Then, you know, but if you break it up, you know, yes. and you stagger the payments, uh -huh. then you will be limited in the amount of taxes that you pay. Okay. So you really have to structure it to make sure that uh, you minimize your tax impact. Right. Okay. Or your tax body. Okay. okay. So right. I'm sorry, did I hear you say that they can switch over if they're in the if you're in the old pension plan? If you're in the old pension plan, yeah, there's a window. They can switch over. Yes, there's a window, there's a, you know, that period you can switch from DB into the DC plan, from the old plan into the, D, uh, into the new plan. If you want to have access to your money quicker, then you know, we will do the calculation, determine how much of the money that you have in DB plan can be rolled into the DC plan for you. If they do that. Oh, your money goes into it? It's the actuarially determined. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, you know, we have people that do the calculation and they'll make a determination as to how much of that money will be rolled into the DC plan. If and you do that, yes. can you still take your insurance and have your insurance then it becomes, you know, are you age 60 with 10 years of service? Mm -hmm. Or, but if they go ahead and retire, years of if they go ahead and retire in the 65. old plan, even if it's an early retirement, even if they've got 20 years in and they Wait, get an early retirement, they can still take their insurance. You can. But if they switch over to the new plan, mm -hmm. they are not eligible to take their insurance until they reach that age, correct? Yes, until make you, sure all of them know you, that. you have to meet yeah, the, you have to meet you have to meet the requirement in the new plan for you to be eligible for the ancillary benefits. But it's something you can discuss. You know, when we meet with you, you know, you can discuss that. You know, if it's something that you want to consider, I just put that on the table in case somebody wants to consider. All right, all right, well, guys. We'll, December is really booked, but we'll get something scheduled for December simply because that will be the last time we meet. Particularly Tony's folks, but you didn't have many folks here. Yeah, I did. Two of them? Okay. So you got how many people? 60? Yeah. 65? Okay. Well, thank you for coming and uh, have a great afternoon. See you next time.